Hey everyone. So for this tutorial, I taped off my cups ahead of time. If you wanna see a tutorial on how to do that, I will link it below. I'm gonna go in and base paint with some blue acrylic paint, and then I will be going over that with Peachy Olive Glitter Semperfy. Once your first layer of paint is dry, you can go in with a second layer if you need to. I decided to use a bit of a darker color for my second layer because it's gonna match my glitter color a little bit better. You'll also want to take a pencil and give yourself a little bit of an outline around the tape and we're gonna use this line a little bit later. Now I'm just gonna mix up a little bit of epoxy. I'm using counterculture DIY fast set for this part because it cures and dries pretty quickly. So I'm just gonna do a really, really thin coat over all of the cups, making sure that I'm staying on the bottom side of where I taped off. I don't wanna get any epoxy on the white part of the cup. Once you have your epoxy applied, you wanna make sure that you don't have any uh, lines in your epoxy because you'll be able to see those lines through your glitter. So you can go over with a torch really quick to make sure that all those lines are smoothed out and that you don't have any larger bubbles. Um, once your epoxy is nice and smooth, then you can go in with your glitter. So here I wanna show you how I glitter the bottoms of my cups. Um, I kind of just pile up the excess glitter that's fallen kind of into a little pile. I take my cup off of my turning arm and I just push it down into that glitter. And then I take something like scissors and just tap off the excess and that covers the bottom of your cup um, quickly and easily. After a few minutes of spinning, you can remove your painter's tape, revealing your nice crisp line. Make sure to do this slowly, um, otherwise you can pull up a little bit of your uh, white base paint. If you do happen to pull up a little bit of your spray paint, you can just touch it up with some acrylic paint if you need to. Once you've removed all the tape, you'll wanna let this spin for a couple of hours and make sure that it's dry before sealing. You can seal with a CC DIY Quick Coat. You can use polycrylic or even clear spray paint. I used polycrylic for my cups. And here I'm just going to use that pencil mark that we made earlier as a guide for um, my new tape lines. 
So I'm just gonna apply it right above the mark that we made. And then I'm also gonna take the painter's tape and apply it onto that blue glitter so I can protect it from getting any epoxy or other colors of glitter on it. Next, we are going to add some epoxy so we can apply our second color of glitter. You want to make sure that you are using a very minimal amount of epoxy and you also wanna make sure that you are being a little bit light-handed around those edges, especially where the tape is covering the glitter because you don't want to accidentally get some epoxy under that tape because then you might get glitter under it as well. And for the stripes, two cups are going to get uh, PDB Brilliant. It's just a nice silver color. And then one of the cups is gonna get Winifred from Peachy Olive Glitters. After you've applied your glitters, you can slowly and carefully remove your painter's tape. When using darker glitter colors, you do wanna have a base paint of a color that is close to the glitter. You can see here that you can kind of see that white base paint underneath the copper glitter. So I'm gonna show you how you can add another layer if you need to. Um, but like I said, if you just use a base paint that's close to the color glitter you're using, you won't have to do two coats of glitter. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of Mod Podge on a flat head paintbrush. Um, I don't normally like to use Mod Podge, but it's really helpful when you need to do a second coat of glitter really quickly. So I'm just going to go around making sure that I just stay within that bronze glitter. I don't wanna get Mod Podge onto the white part of the cup or onto my blue glitter that I've already applied. And you're just gonna go in with your glitter again. Don't worry too much about getting the actual glitter onto um, the white or the blue parts of the cup because the blue glitter has been sealed really well. So I don't have to worry about the bronze glitter sticking to it. Once the Mod Podge is dry, you'll just wanna take a dry brush and brush off all of the excess bronze glitter. You're also going to want to do this for the silver glitters as well. So 
So the next step is to seal the silver and bronze glitters. I just use a little bit of polyacrylic and again a flat headed paintbrush to do that. Um, and you just want to give it one thin coat. You don't want it to be too thick, otherwise your glitters will look a little bit cloudy after you epoxy it. But if you stick to doing just a thin coat, uh, once you epoxy, it'll shine back up like normal. So now we'll prepare our book pages to use on our cup. I went ahead and cut out some of my favorite quotes from Harry Potter and I'm also going to take out a few um, whole entire pages from the book so I can use on the cup as well. You can print out your own book pages if you'd like and in order to get the kind of ivory look you can use a tea stain or a coffee stain um, to make them a little bit vintage looking or antique looking. Uh, you'll want to cut off any excess paper around the quotes that you're going to use and then you'll burn the edges with a lighter or you can even use like a small candle. Once you have all those edges burned, you'll want to remove any of the excess ash. Just you can use your fingers if you like. Um, and the reason you want to remove the excess ash is because once we go to Mod Podge them onto the cup, if there's any excess ash, it's just going to go all over the cup and you don't really want that. So now we're gonna start laying down our book pages. Before I put any of the little burn pieces on, I like to go in and put a few larger pieces sort of as a base layer because I don't want to use so many of the burn pieces because I find that if you use layer upon layer upon layer of book pages, your cup starts to get a little bit thick. So this will help me to keep my layers nice and thin. So all I'm doing is taking a full sheet for the two um, sides. I trim off the top edge of a page and one of the side edges of a page. I line it up and then I kind of try to feel underneath the page where the glitter is. And then I take my little scraper tool and I make myself a score line. So that way I can um, make sort of a template and cut it out. Um, and then as you can see here, once I lay it back down on the cup, it fits nicely right to the edge of that glitter. So as you can see, I will need one more page to cover the middle. And for that, I'm just using again a full page. I'm gonna leave the top edge that has the chapter name and I'm just gonna cut off the two side edges. Um, as you can see, I'm kind of feeling for where the glitter is and just holding it in place and scoring with my fingernail. You can use your fingernail, you can use a scraper tool like I'm using here. I do not suggest using an X-Acto knife because if you accidentally slip, you can cut yourself or you can ruin the glitter that's underneath. So once you have everything nice and trimmed up, you can start applying your pages with Mod Podge. So I like to keep my Mod Podge in a little squeezer condiment bottle. It just makes it easier for applying and storing. So you'll take a little Mod Podge, you'll put it all over the cup. You will then lay your book page down, making sure that you don't have any lumps or bumps or wrinkles. You wanna keep the pages as flat as possible. Once you have your book pages down, you'll wanna go over them again with another thin layer of Mod Podge. And then once you have um, your base layer down, 
then you can take your smaller pieces that you've burned and start laying those on the cup um, in the same manner. You'll put down a little bit of Mod Podge, spread it around with a paintbrush, stick down your little piece, and then go over again with a little bit more Mod Podge and that'll um, stick it in place for you. Once your Mod Podge is dry, you want to take an X-Acto knife and carefully trim away any excess paper around the rim of the cup. You'll also want to check the borders of where the paper and the glitter meet to make sure you don't have any paper overlapping your glitter. If you do, just take the X-Acto knife and trim it off very carefully. Once everything is trimmed and ready to go, you're gonna want to seal the book pages a few more times. I'm gonna use CC DIY Quick Coat, but you can also use Mod Podge. You do wanna make sure that you are paying special attention to where the glitter and the paper meet because that part has to be sealed really, really well. If not, the epoxy will get underneath it and create these sort of wet spots in your paper that you can't get rid of. So just make sure to seal your paper really, really well before you epoxy. Once your sealer is completely dry, you can go in with some epoxy. One tip when using any kind of epoxy is after you've mixed it, let it sit until it's about the consistency of honey and then apply to your cups. You will not need to do a flood coat and your glitter will be totally covered and smooth. The next step is to sand before you apply your decals. I like to sand just lightly around any rough patches. If it's a little too rough, you can go in with another layer of epoxy, it's not a big deal. And then wipe that dust away with a little bit of alcohol on a paper towel. Then I take my Dremel with a flap wheel attachment and I run that along the rim a few times and that just gives me a nice, clean, smooth rim. For my decals, I use a Hogwarts alumni decal and then I cut four strips that are 0.2 inches wide by 11 and a half inches long. So now we're gonna apply our vinyl strips and all I'm doing here is basically just covering the seams of the glitter so you can't really tell where they meet. And then uh, you'll take an X-Acto knife and you'll trim off any excess vinyl. And when you do trim it off, you'll see that it comes to a nice point for you. And that's what you're looking for. You kind of want these points to all line up together. So just keep that in mind when you are trimming and laying down the vinyl. Um, you'll lay, lay down the vinyl between the two glitter colors and then you'll do two more strips between uh, where the paper and the glitter meet as well.
Once I've applied my vinyl, I kind of let it sit for a couple hours just to make sure that it's nice and stuck down. After that, you can go ahead and um, put another layer of epoxy down. Again, I do like to wait about 10 to 15 minutes for the epoxy to thicken up to a honey-like consistency. This helps me to only have to apply one layer of epoxy as opposed to you know, two or three layers even. Uh, so you just wanna make sure that you are covering the top rim really well, the bottom rim really well, and then also over your decals.